Alright, welcome to the third episode of the little tiled maps in LibGDX series. And I renamed this because we are not going to create a proper game, just a prototype. But who cares? And I took one of these episodes out because actually getting tiles at a position and their properties and collision detection, we can put this in one episode. So today we are actually going to put the collision detection in the game because every time someone creates a tiled map game um, they're asking how to do the collision detection and I hope I'll cover this in a deceptible way <laughs> because there's really a bunch of ways that you can use for the uh, that you can use for the collision detection and I'm just going to present one today so before we start I just want to quickly show you that I created a repository for this uh, yeah, for this series again, which is at bitbucket.org slash the fan slash tiled map tiled map game. And yeah, there we are again. Um, you can check out the source code and you can download the the images and the tiled maps that I'm using here in case you want the same one. So anyway, um, let's get this happening. Why is there this? What's uh, what's up? <sighs> okay, I'm going to cut this out. <laughs> Alright, so right now we got not so much. Let's have a look. Totally great, we are rendering an isometric tiled map. And at first we want to change this to rendering an orthogonal map tiled map and yeah, just rendering it isn't really this exciting. So yeah, this is actually an orthogonal tiled map render as well as down here orthogonal and we have to put the orthogonal map in otherwise it's going to look totally messed up um, and this is already better than before because we have the correct map now I mean the map looks shitty but who cares um, so yeah in order to actually have a player that moves around and that does collision detection we have to put one in here of course, the player class doesn't create, so, uh, does, <laughs> doesn't create, doesn't exist yet, so we have to create it. Um, this is going to be in the dot entities, uh, yeah, package. Who cares? This package doesn't exist yet for you, so you just create it. And as super class, we're actually going to extend the sprite. So why the sprite? I mean, a player is an entity, and not really a sprite, but we can do this. Um, it's kind of okay. I mean, this is just an example anyway, but the sprite has pretty much all we need. It has a position, it has a width and a height, it even has a bounding rectangle, it has a rotation, that's everything that we could possibly need. And obviously it has the texture that is going to be rendered. Um, I've also seen people extending their player class, the sprite, um, before, so it doesn't seem to be this much of a sin. And yeah, we're just going to extend the sprite, okay? Um, finish. So there we go, there's the player. Now this guy here is fine. And the first thing that is different from a usual sprite is that this sprite can move around. So let's put something in here that is going to take care of the, of the movement. And that is going to be a vector 2. So in case you don't know what a vector2 is, it's just holding an x and a y value. This is really, yeah, pretty much everything. There's a bunch of methods in it that allow us to get some, some calculations and whatever. But I've talked about vector2s in the other series 
anyway, so let's comment this on the way because this player class is going to get pretty li pretty big. Um, the movement velocity velocity actually this is going to be called velocity. Um, the next thing we need is a float called speed that tells us yeah how fast is the player supposed to move around and let's just say the, the for be the for the beginning this is going to be uh, i don't know two time huh? <laughs> sixty times two I'm just having a look from my other class these you can just figure these numbers out. I'm going to talk about them later a little bit more and the next thing we need is the gravity that is supposed to yeah be applied to the player. And that is going to be 60 times 1.8f. <laughs> just figure these values out yourself. It's just changing stuff, like, you know. I think we don't have to comment on these. Um, fine. So let's create this player. At first we're going to need a constructor. And this is actually going to take the sprite that, yeah, says how should the player look. And nothing for now. So we just want to call the super constructor of the sprite, which also takes a sprite, like this, new sprite, uh, which takes a sprite, um, which is just creating a copy in every way of the specified sprite. So we put a sprite in here and the player looks exactly like that. Um, yeah, right now we just put some variables in here and actually we have to initialize this one here, new vector2 with 0, 0. And now we want to take care of actually updating the player so that he's not just uh, going to stay around statically. And to do that we want to override the draw method. So before it should actually be drawn, we want to update the player. And for this we're going to create an update method, uh, with which takes the time that passed since the last frame. So it's the delta time that we get from gdx.graphics.getDeltaTime. So let's go ahead and create this update method. And I have to drink something. Alright. Um, so in this update method we want to calculate the new position based on the velocity, which is based on the speed and the gravity. And we want to see if the player collides with something and then reset its position. So at first we're going to take off actually moving around, applying the gravity to the sky. And this is happening by just saying velocity dot y minus equals um, gravity times delta. So what does this do? It just applies the gravity. Because the velocity in the y direction should be um yeah should get lower because the gravity pulls you down, so minus the gravity and times delta because yeah we only want if for different frame rates it should be the same gravity and not for 30 frames per second be slower than for 60 frames per second and stuff like that. Um, then we want to see if the gravity is absolutely crazy because if we subtract the gravity times delta um, every frame and we are just standing around and not applying some some other gravity uh, some something against the gravity to push the player up again the gravity could go into to into crazy values that is just going to take the player into the void for whatever. So we want to actually how's that called? Yeah, how's that how's that called? Clamp. We want to clamp the gravity. Actually, we want to clamp the velocity. So if velocity dot y is bigger than speed, so yeah, <laughs> then uh, velocity dot y should be set equal to speed, so it can never go over speed. And else if it is 
velocity dot y is smaller than speed uh, that means we are going to the bottom we're going in the negative right direction we want it to be equal to minus speed so this is going uh, in the yeah downwards so now that way we've uh, handled this this should already no, this is actually not doing anything because we're not applying the velocity to the player. For the uh, for this, we're going to just say set x, which is a method of the sprite that we're extending um, to the current x position actually um, plus velocity dot x times delta. So this is taken the current x position, adds the speed in one direction, the velocity in this x direction, and takes it times delta. So we also have this frame, yeah, suspension thing that makes everything looks the same on every kind of frame rate. We want to do the same for y. And this should already set the position. Now let's go ahead and create this player in yeah in the play screen. Oops. Player equals new player and we said it takes a sprite. So let's create a new sprite. And this takes a new texture. And this texture is going to be image player.png. What's this guy's problem? Okay, I have no idea how these get there. Um, so, okay, we created the player, but we want to also draw it. Otherwise, it makes no sense to have one. So, player.draw on the sprite patch. On what sprite patch? Right, on what sprite patch? <laughs> we want to use the sprite patch of the orthogonal type map renderer that we have here, because this one has the sprite patch anyway. So, we can just use the same one as the renderer. So we say renderer dot get sprite batch. But we have to call batch dot begin and batch dot end before we can do anything. So let's do this. And this should already render the player. Hopefully. <laughs> And there you go. He falls down and we cannot do anything against it. So let's see how long uh, are we recording. Yeah, already around 15 minutes. So uh, we already have the gravity being applied to the player. And in the next episode we are going to actually put some control in our hands so we can move the player around ourselves. And yeah, let's just have a really quick look at this player again. So. In the render method, we actually just call player.draw, but player.draw also calls the update method with the delta time that we just get from gdxographics.get delta time. And in the update method, we calculate the new velocity downwards, which is influenced by the gravity. Then we see if it's too fast for yeah for us, <laughs> if it's over the speed limit and set it to the speed limit if it's over it and then we just calculate the new position of the player according to this velocity that we calculated before um... yeah so next episode we are going to talk... oh! one thing, one thing player.getTexture.dispose okay, never forget the dispose so now actually in the next episode we are going to talk about the controlling the player or the collision detection. I don't know how much we'll get done then. So see you then, and thanks you for uh, thank you for watching this episode. Have fun programming. <laughs>